Mark, here's your video. First thing I want you to do is play some shots with your head kind of underneath your right arm. Again, when we were in Minnesota, you noticed when you kept that head cover in the arm, your right elbow stayed in front of your seam line. Because you're left-handed playing right-handed golf, you have a tendency when you put, take it back with your left arm to get that right elbow behind you and it gets trapped behind you. Since you're an under golfer, you need to keep that elbow more in front. So what I want you to do again is grab that head cover, put it underneath your arm in such a way that you can feel that that right elbow is going to stay pitched a little bit more in front of your body. Just go ahead and play some shots. You can start off with some half shots, work your, your, your way up from there. Okay, now the other thing that you were worried about is uh, staying front anchor in your golf swing. Like you said, um, lately you've been having trouble either staying front anchor or getting back to your left side, you said. What we wanted you to do is stay on your left side you know, as you load the back swing. And I think you have a tendency at times when you get set up, when you want to put more weight on your front leg, is to sort of lean into that front side. What I'd rather have you do, again, there's different versions of front anchor golf. What I'd rather have you do is get set up and bump your hips forward so that's going to put more weight on your front foot than your back foot. It's also going to give you a little bit more secondary tilt. And that's going to create more room for your arm to get in front of your seam line coming down. The other thing this is going to do, it's going to allow you to swivel your hips a little bit better. So once you get set up, you bump your hips forward. Now during the backswing, you want to get the sense that your right glute is rotating towards your left heel. So that's what I call a counter swivel action. So if you have that counter swivel action and you keep that right arm, feeling like you're holding that head cover and it's pinned right in front of your seam line, you're going to have lots of room coming down to keep those arms a little bit more in front of you instead of getting that uh, right elbow well behind you. Let's see what that looks like. Now one other thing I want you to make sure you're doing is that when you step into the ball, always step in with your left foot first. It's going to make it easier for you to get front anchor and stay front anchor. So left foot first, right then left, bump your hips forward. From here we're going to keep that elbow tucked in front of the seam line. And you're going to find out if you're doing these things correctly, if anything you're going to get pushes. And so those pulls and those pull hooks you get and the elbow gets too far behind you, you're actually going to feel like you're going to start to get some pushes. Once you start getting regular pushes, what you just want to make sure you do is you rotate harder left as you go into your exit in the fall through. Okay, you can see I got a lot more around to my left. I exited left a lot better that time. That ball went a lot higher and actually a lot straighter. That shot was actually dead straight. So, you know, to recap, we want you to train with the head cover under your right arm so you can keep that right elbow in front of the seam line of your body. As you step into the ball, I want you to step in left foot first, then right, then left. Bump your hips forward. That's going to get you front anchor with secondary tilt. From here, when you're waggling, get that feel of that right elbow staying in front of your seam line as you waggle. Okay? When you make your start your swing, you're going to counter swivel your hips this way, and that's going to give you a lot more room for that right arm to stay in front of your body. As you come down and through, then make sure you go ahead and exit enough left so that that ball goes down the line instead of getting those pushes. I hope this helps out.
but Mark, there's one other thing that I mentioned uh, when we talked on the phone that you need to do also. And so you get set up, step in with your left hip first, right then left, up your hips forward. And as you're waggling and you want to feel that right elbow staying tucked in front of the seam line of your shirt, your right glute's going to counter swivel towards your left heel. So from here again, you're going to feel like that right arm, as long as you have that feeling of holding that head cover under your arm, that that right arm's going to stay more in front. And as you come into impact, again, I want you to feel like you're using your legs to push up off the ground. You're launching your ground force with your legs. You're going to feel like your legs are straightening. At the same time, you're going to be squeezing those glutes together through the ball. Both of those are going to make it easier for you to stay on your left side and to get a little more speed in your swing. Okay? So we want to get a little bit more of that the leg action working, get you a little more launch on that left leg. Squeeze those glutes together as you go through the ball. That shot actually turned out to be a little push. Again, I launched my legs and squeezed my glutes so well that that added more verticals in the golf swing. When your verticals are stronger than your horizontals, which is more the rotary motion, and depending on your release, the way you release the club, you're going to find that ball is going to go more to the right. So as soon as you start launching and those balls go to the right, all you got to do is go ahead and release harder and, and turn more left, and that ball is going to go straight. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a try. Alright, so I had good launch on that one. I also went ahead and I just freewheeled my release and I went ahead and I cornered harder left in the fall through. That ball went right down the corridor right at the target. Alright, so I hope these are going to help you out. Again, take a look at it from the face-on view and from the down-the-line view. If you have any questions, give me a call.